All right, let's get rid of this glare. This is not good. Let me scoot off to the side here. All right, so other than the white light, which could be a metaphor for what just happened, uh, as far as Power Morphicon goes, a nice little pun. Power Morphicon, White Ranger, White Light. There you go. So, what am I up to? Well, I've recently been laid off from my job, so to make ends meet, I am Ubering and lifting full time, which is taking up six days of my week. And the only free day that I have is on Sundays, where it, right now, <laughs> right now it's kind of difficult to uh, to do what I want to do because of football season. Because I play fantasy football competitively, and I also play um, for money, it's going to eat up a lot of my time. Um, during the week, I've got to work a lot. I've got a lot of money to make, a very short time to do it. And given that the fact that I was making six figures before this layoff, I am now working around the clock, it seems like. Um, and I've also come into some issues with you know, flat tire, gas, oil changes being expensive. It's been kind of eating away at my limited supply of cash. Unfortunately, I've done not so well at saving. So I can't just sit around making content for y'all, which sucks. But it is what it is at the end of the day. And I hate that I can't do more for you. And I hate that I can't do anything in way of playing Mega Man games, which is about five games away from being finished uh, before Mega Man 11 comes out in October. And I'd like to be able to finish it before then. Unfortunately, the timing is a bitch. And I can almost guarantee that's not going to happen. So what is going to happen is I'll play Mega Man 11 when it comes out. I will stream it when I have time to play it. I would imagine I'll be able to play at least an hour every day. But I can't make any guarantees as to when. I can't make any guarantees as to where or how. Uh, it just sort of works out that way. And for right now, it's a tricky situation. And all I got to do is grin and bear it. So... I want to play Mega Man 11 as long as possible. I'd like to be able to play the whole thing in a day. Unfortunately, it's probably not going to happen. Uh, like I said, the only days that I'm going to have off are Sundays. And Sundays will be eaten up by football and other projects. Unfortunately, um, I think gaming is going to have to take a back seat for a while until I find new employment. So... Yes, I will continue doing Mega Man. Yes, I will continue to stream. But it will be a long and interesting process in order for that to happen. I don't know. Maybe I should just take off certain days. Not worry about Uber and Lyft on certain days. But Bill's got to get paid, unfortunately. So... My uh, ability to do so is greatly diminished. And if I were to do it, it would only be for like an hour at a time. I mean, I don't know if I could do it any more than that, uh, given everything else I have to do, given the fact that I just now started basically doing this full time. I don't really know how to balance that quite yet. Uh, so it's going to take some time to get that finished. And... Uh, We'll see what happens from there. Uh, other than that, 
that's basically my life is Uber and lifting. And tonight I had a flat tire, which is the only reason why I'm even able to make this video in the first place. I've had to take a good long look in the mirror about a lot of things. I've had to re-examine where my priorities are. I uh, re-examine some of the decisions I've made and adjust accordingly. And it's been kind of a brutal couple weeks. Um, not that I'm complaining because, you know, everything happens for a reason. And I guess karma being what it is, that uh, maybe I deserved it. <laughs> maybe I needed to re-examine myself and get back where I needed to be mentally um you know basically what i was doing was unacceptable uh in my minds and i won't go into much detail with all that but you know it is what it is you make bad decisions sometimes you get stuck making those same bad decisions for a while and someone's got to pull your head out of your ass and make you see what's going on around you so that's basically where I am. I'm in a deep, deep analysis of my own mind and where things stand. And that's kind of what's happening for me right now. Trying to reevaluate myself, trying to make sure the bills are paid. And all at the same time, trying to get back on my feet and get new employment. So that's where I am, and don't worry, they will come back eventually, the streams, and you will get what you want. For the time being, however, I just can't do it. With that all the way, um, I need to tell you about what happened with Power Morphicon. So I was at Power Morphicon, and I can say without question it was the best con that I've ever, ever been to. I mean, it's so intimate. That's probably the best way I know how to describe Power Morphicon was that it was very, very intimate. And I don't know if I found a moment where I didn't like it, where I was there. And I just, I enjoyed pretty much every aspect of it. I really can't say enough about how nice everybody was uh there were no power rangers that took themselves too seriously there were no inflated egos um everybody cared about what you had to say and um the stories you had to tell about you know playing karate with your brother after every episode of mighty Morphin power rangers which is what i did um they knew your names like they didn't just forget about you immediately after seeing you um you know, it was absolutely fantastic. A great experience. Um, I'm so glad I went. I could have easily, in my financial peril, said, no, I'm not going to go. And that would have been the end of it. But I had to go. I've been waiting for a long, long time to go. And I was not going to let a little hiccup get in the way of that. Uh even though financially it killed my savings pretty much. Uh, I will not, I won't let that bother me. I won't stand by and let that sort of thing get in the way of my dreams or what I've ever had to do in life. Um, you make things work uh, regardless of what you've had to go through in life. You know, you've got to do what you got to do sometimes. <laughs> And, you know, if it means taking a vacation to get your head straight and have some last fun before the long period of getting back to normal begins, it's not always easy doing that. And I think that California trip to Power Morphicon was what I needed at that time. But as far as individual people that I met, I uh, met pretty much everybody I wanted to meet. Um, Jason David Frank's lines are always the longest, so <laughs> it is pretty hard to meet him unless you make that your priority, which um, 
I don't know how people are able to wait in line as long as they are for him, you know, especially because he does so many conventions. It's, to me, you really have to be patient and you really have to be willing to meet somebody like that that's going to have a long line and always does. And with that in mind, I pretty much took a look at everybody else that was at the convention. I just kind of walked around, observed everything. The only hiccup of Power Morphicon was the first day, getting our badges. Um, to say that they were understaffed was an understatement. They were very much understaffed. Um, it was a really harrowing experience. I went to bed pretty early the night before because I was so exhausted. We had just got done meeting uh, Austin St. John, who was the original Red Ranger on Thursday night. And that was all after me flying in, having lunch with an old friend, going to my old apartment complex where I used to live in Huntington Beach, uh, where um, I used to go to school at. After all that, I still had to go and meet Austin St. John. So um, it was absolutely exhausting going through the whole process of that day. But knowing that you're going to meet one of your heroes, uh, I thought that was absolutely phenomenal. Um, you know, and meeting him was a good start. And I'm glad I got to do it. Um, his autograph was by far the most expensive that I paid for that entire weekend. Um, but, you know, it's totally worth it. And... For somebody that needed that at that time, I was kind of willing to do it. <laughs> Not that uh, you should go out and buy your feelings, but it was a nice way to begin the whole festivities. But I went to bed pretty early the night before after that. I should have listened to my instincts and gotten in line right when the... <laughs> when I woke up that morning, which was like 6 a.m., because I got there about an hour and a half early, or about an hour and 15 minutes early, and it was awful. Um, there was one person per membership type, and if you know the different membership types with Power Morphicon, then you'll know what I'm talking about when I say it's very, very frustrating when... There's only one person dealing with your particular badge at a time, and there's six people total running the booths. <sighs> okay, you had to know how many people were going to be there. You had to know. Because the Friday event was the pre-registration period. You had to pick up your badges at the door before you could get in. And Friday was for pre-registers only. And for whatever reason, <laughs> I, 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 it still blows my mind that it was this poorly mismanaged. But it was. And, you know, it took me four hours. I mean, I had to cancel my plans with my friend on Friday because of it, I was very, very disappointed. Um, I really didn't get to do anything at the convention until right at 4 o'clock, which involved me getting in line to pick up my stuff at the pre-register booth, which involved some toys, some coins, all the stuff that you get when you pre-register with Power Morphicon, um, all of which I have. Uh, I got the gold rim... Uh, I got the Gold Ranger membership, so I had a lot of goodies to take home with me. And once that was over, I was finally free to go out and start meeting people and start talking to people. And I thought that was the coolest part of the whole thing. And other than that initial hiccup of waiting four hours for your stuff, I had a blast. I mean, I met so many people, it was like a wave of nostalgia over and over again. Um, 
I mean, just meeting some of the people that you grew up idolizing as a kid uh, and having to wait, you know, 25 years to meet them, basically, uh, it's fantastic. You know, you, ne you never forget stuff like that. You know, when you meet Zordon and he's telling you to teleport to the command center immediately, it's just like it brings you all back to when you were five years old watching Power Rangers every day. Um, and when you meet Rita and she's telling you make my monster grow, <laughs> um, you know, I, I love the interactions with everybody. I loved every bit of it. There were a lot of good interactions. Uh, for example, I met Walter Jones, who played the original Black Ranger, Zack. And he was just the coolest cat, man. He looks exactly the same. <laughs> um, but he was... He was so cool. I mean, he didn't have hardly any line that Friday. And that was the great thing about it. If you really want to go to Power Morphicon and meet some people, do it on Friday. Because you will have absolutely no lines. And you'll be able to interact with whoever you want, whenever you want. And that's the coolest thing about it. Is that first day, there's nobody there. And it's just you and the person that you're trying to meet. So you can get a lot done on Friday and have Saturday and Sunday to just, you know, listen to panels, um, interact with, you know, certain people that aren't going to be there on Friday, but you'll have time to do it this time. Um, that's the coolest thing about Fridays. You can get all that stuff taken care of and be free to do whatever you want. And I can't even remember all the people I've met on Friday. Um, but it was absolutely one of the coolest experiences ever. Um, and I took home so many autographs, it's, it's ridiculous. And, you know, it's like I said, when you meet your childhood heroes, they're staring you right in the face and you have a conversation with them. Um, that's so cool. I mean, you meet Rocky, you meet uh, Aisha, uh, you meet Zach or Tommy or... Jason, the Red Ranger, it's just, you can't put it into words, because you've been waiting your whole life to meet these people, especially Carter Grayson, who was, in my mind, my favorite Red Ranger. Um, I just loved how he would go into battle without caring, and he was the season that brought me back to it, because I'd stopped watching Power Rangers after uh, Kimberly left the show. And then I picked it back up again with Lightspeed Rescue, and that was the season that got me back into it. And I remember telling Rhett Fisher that, who had never done a convention before, if I remember right. I'm pretty sure he hasn't, especially not Power Morphicon. And he was just blown away when I said that. He's like, really? Like, I did that for you? Like, it's just, that to me is so very humble. Um... And all of them were like that. I feel like if there's one thing I can say about all the Power Rangers that I met is that a lot of them very closely match their characters or at least embody what that character was and took it with them going forward. Especially Trip. <laughs> Kevin Kleinberg is so Trip. Wow. He's... Just, if you have met Trip and you know what I'm talking about, it will make so much sense. It's so very true. Yeah, he he is precisely the same as Trip. I loved that in so many ways about Kevin Kleinberg. Um, you know, I met Michael Copon and. Uh, Jason Font. Uh, Time Force is one of my favorite seasons, so I got to meet everybody from that season, and it was just cool. You know, Vernon Wells, he doesn't look as scary anymore, but, you know, he played a fantastic villain. And, uh, you know, meeting Eddie Frierson, who played Frax, um, he seems like, you know, just such a regular guy. And, you know, you actually have a regular conversation with these people, uh, they're not A-list superstars, you know, they're very much not that, and, you know, whereas most people would cling to that, they don't, 
You know, they just are regular people. They don't have huge egos about it. And that's what I enjoy. That's what I enjoy when I meet these people and talk to them. And uh, especially Miss Appleby. I met, <laughs> I met Miss Appleby and um, I wish I had that report card. Or it was a detention slip she gave me. Um, and that was the cool thing about meeting certain people. Like they didn't hardly charge. I mean, you normally at a convention, you pay like 40 bucks minimum for an autograph, right? Well, at Power Morphicon, you can pretty much get anybody's autograph for 30 or below. Uh, and most of the time it was 20 or below. And that was really cool for me, uh, was that, you know, you didn't have to overpay to meet certain people. And, um, you know, that, that was another humbling thing for me because I was kind of worried about the, the autograph prices that were going to be there. And um, they weren't expensive at all. I didn't have to budget myself. I didn't have to hold back. I, I met who I want to met and said what I want to said and did what I wanted to do. And, you know, that's the great thing about that convention is it's affordable have actual conversations with people and it's very humbling for a lot of these people as well they take it all in stride they don't you know let it get to their heads they all seem like very genuine people and that's what i liked about this convention more than anything is just how cool everybody is about everything so friday wraps up um Bulk and Skull were not scheduled to be there until Saturday. And after all the festivities on Friday, we had a VIP meet and greet, uh, kind of a social setting on the balcony <coughs> overlooking Disney World, or Disneyland, I should say. We were going to watch the fireworks at Disneyland, and Bulk and Skull... <laughs> shows up i didn't think that much about it you know the actual vip meet and greet but then they showed up bulk and skull showed up out of nowhere i was leaving i was going to my hotel i was tired i wanted to go to sleep i was exhausted i'd done so much that day i was i was like swimming in nostalgia my head was spinning um I had my food, my drinks at the the meet and greet, got to talk to a few people that I had already met again, um, and I was leaving, heading out the door, and then, bam, Bulk and Skull crash the party. They're in the lobby downstairs, and <laughs> I couldn't leave at that point. I had to follow them. I had to, like, be around them somehow, and... Lo and behold, I go and talk to them, and I'm now riding up the escalator with them all the way up to the balcony area. And all the while, you know, I'm trying to get their attention and stuff. And, you know, I'm trying to be polite about it because I'm, like, freaking out because it's bulk and skull. And <laughs> I say hi to bulk, and because there's such a huge crowd on this balcony, he kind of takes me in his arms and like uses me as kind of like a front to get through the crowd. And so he he starts yelling, hey guys, this is Keith, you know, he's a cool guy, give him some love. And I just, wow, I mean, that's... That's something you can't put a price on. The fact that Bulk would take time to make one fan feel special like that when he didn't have to. It's awesome. You know, I enjoyed that more than anything that whole that whole weekend. And for a guy that was going through a lot of shit at that time and having to deal with the reality of going back home and having to face his problems. You know, for one night he felt cool, you know. <laughs> um, I'm not crying, you're crying. But 
anyway, you know, talking to them and just having that great interaction with them and talking to Skull about baseball, you know, for example. You know, you don't get to have those conversations with other celebrities, quote-unquote. And, you know, basically as I was walking out, Bolt told me, you won the VIP party, man. <laughs> and I saw them the next day, like, first thing. Got to formally meet them and get their autographs and stuff. And I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt, they are genuinely the most funny duo in person I've ever been around. And I'm not exaggerating. I think they would do well to go on tour doing comedy clubs if it's feasible. If, you know, if Skull can get off from having to uh, be a father for a little bit, like even a couple weeks even, you know, <laughs> if his wife will allow it, um, you know, just be able to go on the road and not have to deal with the obligations of being at home, you know, I think that would be fantastic. But obviously parenting is more important than going on tour and being a comedy club hit or, you know, stuff like that. But in the future, if they ever decide to do it, I think that would be really, really cool. I think they'd make a ton of money at it. And they're hilarious together. They've always been funny. Uh, but seeing it in person and seeing how genuine and like impromptu it all is and spontaneous it is, it's, it's crazy. You know, you just laugh your ass off at some of the things they do you know, on the show and off the show. But... You know, it's like I said, I met a, few, a handful of people that were there Saturday, but Saturday was definitely the busiest day. Um, I wouldn't, <laughs> unless you were just dying to meet certain people on Saturday, um, it's best to just kind of stay away from the lines, I guess, and try and observe panels or check out the merch or do anything but try and go into Jason David Frank's line, basically. Unless you're there right away. Uh, that would probably not be the, the best thing to do. So, I met the remaining people on Saturday. You know, it was another great experience. I was so exhausted by the end of it at... Um, I was like, it, it, you know, I was having so much fun... I didn't want to go back to the hotel and rest. I just, I couldn't be anywhere else but Power Morphicon at that point. I had already been to see so many different people and meet so many different people. Um, Selwyn Ward was a great guy to talk to, uh, for example. You know, I'm taller than him. He was like, how tall are you? I'm like, kind of like in shock, like, you know. <laughs> you know, stuff like that makes you feel good about yourself, uh, especially when you're standing next to a Power Ranger, especially a Red Ranger like he was. And so from about 1 o'clock onward, I stayed and watched like four or five different panels. And it was the coolest experience, you know, just to sit back and relax for once and, you know, get good questions, talk to, you know, all these different people that you grew up again watching for many, many years. And one of the funniest questions was, um, this kid, he was like, so why are there Sentai in the legendary battle? You know, he, he made it seem like he was like 30 years old, like a fanboy or something. He's like, he's been bothering me for years. And it was just the way he said it. It cracked the entire room up. It was like he was like an old soul or something. He was looking for things to nitpick in the legendary battle. It was like, oh, why are there Sentai in the legendary battle? And it's been bugging me for 10 years. And this kid's like 11. Like, <laughs> you know, it's just stuff like that. Like the fans are genuinely into it. Like this is not an event for like casual people. This is like something that you go to as like a Mecca or, you know, religious experience is what I called it. Because I felt like it really was a religious experience for me. And 
getting to ask Ron Wasserman, for example, uh, what his influences were as far as making music for Power Rangers and, you know, as far as what his influences were as far as making the theme song, he said it basically just came from the heart. You know, they were looking for something to get done really quick and that was basically what happened was he made the theme song in very short order and he got it through somehow. It managed to go through and that was the nature of the theme song for Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. It just sort of came from the heart, no restrictions, no limitations. It needed to be done in a timely fashion and it worked out for him. So <laughs> he made one of the greatest theme songs ever, in my opinion. Um, any 90s kid remembers that theme song. If you if you were a 90s kid and didn't know that theme song, you didn't live in the 90s, man. Um, and one of the cooler things that I got to sit in on, as far as panels go, was uh, I sat in on the Shattered Grid paddle. And that was really cool because David Fielding got to revive... Or, reprise i should say his role as zordon which was really cool uh for the first time in a long long time and walter jones got to reprise his role as zach for the first time in a long time that table reading was fantastic i mean it was just like you get goosebumps because you're like for the first time and you know how long it's been you know these guys are going to be on the stage talking in their respective characters and Again, it's just stuff like that, man. You just can't put a price tag on. And, you know, I just, like I said, I enjoyed those little moments, those little interactions and being able to thank the people that you grew up watching for all the moments that they gave you and for all the little things, the lessons in life that you learned uh, from watching Power Rangers. And Power Morphicon... If you liked Power Rangers and you're into it and you appreciate its art form, Power Morphicon is a must-do. It's an absolute must-do. And I remember going through everybody, pretty much, and thanking them for their time after I was about to leave on Sunday because I had finished up what I wanted to do on Sunday and... You know, I was tired. I wanted to go to I wanted to go to sleep at a reasonable hour. There were still some things I wanted to do, like go to the beach. And you know, I thanked them all, and they remembered who I was, and you know, and I left. But it was like a bittersweet feeling for some reason. I just felt like I didn't want to leave. I didn't want it to end, but I knew I had to go because there were some things I had to take care of and some things I wanted to do first, and. Uh, but it was a fantastic experience, and I will go back. I will go back next time it comes around, which is 2020. Uh, me and my friend are talking about going to it. I am almost positive I will be there again, and hopefully with some new content to give you all from Power Morphicon. I unfortunately didn't have really a whole lot of means of producing any content from there but I did take a whole lot of pictures I did take a whole lot of video and I have a stories for a lifetime man I've got tons of them but I don't have time to share them all um, if you would like I could post a video of my new Power Rangers autograph collection which is extensive now <laughs> but I had a fantastic time. I wouldn't trade it for anything, even though I was technically broke. Um, you know, I still made it work. I used what little savings I had left and did it. You know, I wasn't going to let something like that ruin my fun. And I wasn't going to let that, what had happened, uh, cloud my mind for that weekend. I was going to let it go for a weekend and just focus on having fun and Power Morphicon delivered on that and everything and made you feel good and made you forget about your worries and your troubles. And that's what I want out of a convention. I want it to make you forget about all the daily struggles that you have. And for those people 
to genuinely be like their characters and to just be kind and remember who you are and be interested in who you are and what you've gotten from Power Rangers is so cool. And I'll never forget it. I will never, ever forget that experience, and I can't wait to do it again. And I will do it again. But yeah, so I should probably wrap it up here. Um, I've got lots to say and lots to do, but not enough time to do it. Again, if you would like to see all the pictures and stuff, I can easily make that happen. I just don't know when that's going to be. Unfortunately, like I said at the beginning of this video, I don't know when that will get done. I don't know when I'll be able to stream again. I would just say be patient. Eventually, I will make new content as well. I will not just be streaming exclusively. That's something I would like to do right now, but I won't be doing it forever. I would like to be able to produce my own exclusive content and make it fun and interesting for you, but I'm not just going to shoot something out like this where it's just me talking in front of a camera with poor lighting and a glare. <laughs> you know, I'm not just going to be doing that. I'm not just going to ramble on for an hour like I have been already. So I want to make fast-paced entertainment, and I will do that. And some of the content that I will make will include... Um, my favorite films, my favorite songs, my favorite bands. Those are the three ideas that I have in mind right now. So other than the streaming, that's what you can look forward to here. And I'm going to end it right here. So go, go Power Rangers, and it's morphin' time. <laughs>